In our last video, we managed to create a shimmer shader in just GLSL. And now we're going to apply this shader to our sprite in Haxpixel. So you might have noticed the text is a bit smaller and I've done this on purpose to fit everything in. Now I know we don't need this terminal so I can hide it for now, but there's a lot that might go on. So keep that in mind. And if you're struggling to see the text, please feel free to pause zoom in zoom out whatever you need to okay so let's go ahead and get started what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this to one side so i can see the current shader code i've got and i'm going to create a new file called shimmer shader dot hx and as usual let's put that here get rid of these two other files which you shouldn't have open anyway but just in case you do and let's grab the test shader because that's the simplest shader we have. Place it here and make a few adjustments. So let's get rid of this package and put this as shimmer shader. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the change on this side because it has syntax highlighting and whatnot, and I'm gonna copy it over to here. So now let's grab Pragma header, put that here. I'm gonna be sure not to save this because I need this to stay as is. So please don't press Control S or Command S or whatever you're using. And then I'm gonna keep get rid of this because you'll later find out that Hacks Flixel does not support the same uniforms that the regular GSSL canvas does. So we don't need that. We are going to leave these two functions as is because we need them. And down here, we are actually going to need to import this line here. So this texture two bitmap, this is the way we make use of U resolution. So it uses the open FL texture cord, but I'll get to that in a bit. So let us paste that somewhere around here. So this will be our VEC4 color, and this will be our kind of pixel texture cord. So let's get rid of this and put that here. Pi is fine. We don't need this line. All this is fine. The only thing that needs to change is probably this color over here because we're gonna use the opacity of the sprite itself. And something else that we need to change is to say if, if the color has an opacity of say zero, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that as is. So we're gonna say frag color, we'll just equal color. If it doesn't, that means there's some there's a sprite there we're going to put this here we're going to say use this box but also we need to make another change because we only want the white of the box so we need to say if the box has a color of zero which is black then we want to leave that as is so we'll leave that as geofrag color and if it doesn't then do this In fact, because we want it to be white anyway, we could just say do one zero, which is white. So as you can see, this is a bit messy and we can refactor it to be less messy. So what we can do is have a nested if statement. So let's get rid of this. Let's change this to say zero. And if we even wanted to, we could go ahead and have two ampersands to merge these two together. But for now, let's leave this as is. And one thing we have to do, like I mentioned before, because Hacksplixel doesn't support the uniforms that the GLSL canvas does, we need to create our new uniform from scratch. And we are going to say uniform float is U time. And we are going to use Hacksplixel, or we are going to import this U time variable from Hacksplixel into the shader. So let's change this time here with U time. And now what we're going to do is copy all of this and paste it inside here. Perfect. Let's change the indentation a bit. I forgot to grab this pragma header line. So let's grab everything again and change the indentation a bit. What we're gonna do to import this U time variable is do so here in the constructor and create a variable called uTime. 
And the way hack flexor works is if you want to pass a value from outside into inside, we have to have it a value type, sorry, not value type, a, a value field inside this due time variable, and it has to equal an array of the type. So the value is a float, as you can see here. So I could do 0, 0.0 by default, and then in my player function or player class, I can pass the actual value of uTime as a class field of the shimmer shader. So now let's close this. Be sure not to save it. And what I'm going to do is open up the player. And as usual, we are going to say shader equals new shimmer shader. So what about this extra U time field that we created here? Well, what we'd have to do is actually create a variable that is a shader variable before passing it into the shader field here. So let's do, let's do that now. Let's create var and call it shimmer. That's going to equal shimmer shader type. And what we're going to do is say this variable here is actually going to equal the new shimmer shader. And now what we can do there is say this will equal shimmer. And we can say by default the shimmer dot time, sorry, u time will equal a value of zero, which is fine. I'm just setting it to what it already is now. But what we can do inside the update is say shimmer dot u time dot value, the actual value of this here, which we set at the top, we're going to equal that to plus equals elapsed, which is the same as this. Now, what is elapsed doing? Well, we have set in our main class, by default, you'll see the update frame is 60. So the game will refresh 60 times every second. And if we do 60 divided by one, as in one second, you'll see we get, sorry, one divided by 60. You'll see we get 0 0.016667. And what this value is, is that 0 0.016667. It happens every, it happens 60 times, 60 times every second. And here we're adding it to this U time. So we're continuously adding that value. So when it's one second, this will be one. When it's two seconds, this will be two and so forth. So we're passing that value into our shader here. And as you can see, the sign will be making it go forwards and backwards as I explained before. So let's see what that does to our game. So as you can see, our character is here and the shimmer shader is working, but the character isn't visible at the moment. And that's because there has been a slight mistake in the shader. So let's go ahead and change that now. As you can see, it says only apply the shader here if the color is zero. So that means if there's no opacity. And what I had meant to do is make it so that it's not zero. So this is when there is a color, not when there isn't a color, the shader should display. So let's go ahead, save that, rebuild the game and refresh the browser. As you can see, our character appears and the shimmer shader is on them. But as they move around, jump, run or walk, there's a bit of a weird effect happening. And the reason this is happening is because the shader is applied to the whole sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and have a look at that right now. Inside assets images, Kenny underscore, underscore mail, you'll see this whole sprite sheet. And now the shimmer shader is being applied. So this white line is going up and down the whole sprite sheet. And therefore, when we move our character around, it's selecting different frames and applying the shader incorrectly. To fix that, we need to create a new camera apply the shader just to that camera and it will go over the sprite no matter what frame it's on. So in our next video, we are going to fix this issue. But before we go to the next video, I just want to show you what the elapsed or what the U time variable is actually outputting because we're not in GLSL anymore. We can see the values of the code that's coming through. So I'm going to go ahead and open the inspector tools. I'll position it on the right side of the browser and I'm going to open the console. Okay. What I'm going to do now is create a console log or a trace 
for you time and let's go ahead and put that here or a trace for elapsed actually let's have a trace for this so we can see the value I'm going to give it a name of shimmer you time forgot the semicolon now when the game builds when we go into our browser and refresh our page we'll see as I said every second it's adding on the 0 0.1667 onto the U time and it's counting the seconds continually increasing the value for our sine function to work so it's going back and forth up and down between 1 and in our case 0 to move this sine value now let's fix this issue if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to my channel and if you don't want to wait till next week to see the solution of this issue please go ahead and click in the description below to view the full Udemy course.